Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be going into a bit of advanced automation. I'm hesitant to call it that because it's not like that complicated. It's just things that you may not know exist. So we're going to go into a little bit of the details of specifically automation. So I've got an automation clip here and when you double click on automation clips, they open up all these extra menus and it's been remade in a way that's just a pleasure to work with. It used to be displayed a little bit differently. Uh, if you want to see all your automation clips, by the way, I typically just double click on whatever's already been automated if I have one. Uh, but if you could come down here over to your channel rack and go to automation, they'll all be displayed here. So I already had quite a bit of automation going on in this project, but while I was doing it, uh, I decided I'd like to do a whole separate video just on automation. So I've got an automation clip right here. It is connected to the filter. You can see Harmony, Harmony, Harmer 1A is connected to the filter. So this is a filter move. It sounds like this. We can see it moving. Now, a lot of the times you would like a thing to start out small and grow, but sometimes you'd like to automate that motion. Uh, there's various ways. Essentially, you'd like to treat it kind of like an internal envelope or sequencer of a sort. That's basically what automation can be seen as. So let's say instead I want here to have this repeating pattern. And I want this pattern to just keep going. So I'm hitting Control B to duplicate it right after the previous one. And so it would sound like this. Now you might notice that this sound here isn't very sharp. So like this is supposed to be instant, right? It should be like dun, 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 dun. That's because of the type of filter we're using here. You will need a filter that can handle instantaneous change. Uh, so just for a quick example here to show you that why your automation shape might not necessarily match your automation. If you go to the Fruity Fast Low Pass, this is a filter that's been designed to, you know, do it that quickly. And oh, this brings us to our, our next good bit here. So I could attach this. So if I double click on this, it shows you all the things it's linked to. But let's say I don't want to link it to this anymore. I'd like it to be linked to this instead. Uh, before this used to be done differently. Now this is like amazing. Well, but in the clip itself. So we can simply click to add a target and then move our target. It is now added. And then we can click again to end it. And if you want to see what target it's doing, you can actually click on it and click this little animate icon and it will show you like this is the thing that this is attached to, uh, which is also really nice. At the moment, it doesn't support multi selection, which I think would be really cool. Uh, but maybe there's an issue with it be like knobs on multiple plugins being shown at once. Maybe that's why it's not possible. I don't know. I have ideas. But now let's say, okay, I don't want this here anymore because we're going to be using this. So I'm just going to click the X and you can tell it to turn this menu off, but I personally kind of want it here. So I'm going to just say, yeah, we don't want that. So now this is going to work and we'll see that the automation uh, will be a lot more snappy with this particular filter. So that's one, one thing also, I guess you could consider that an advanced concept. It's probably something you ran across where the automation curve that you have might not necessarily match the sound that you think you're hearing and that's part of the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this on here and this brings us to being able to connect multiple parameters. So now let's say hey I'd like to, um, if you hold down alt you can keep multiple windows open. I'd like to add another thing to this. So let's make this a floating window so it doesn't go anywhere. And so I'm going to add a thing to it and I'm going to add this filter. And I'll also add the width just for kind of fun. And I will then say I'm done adding. Now, some of these things I don't want to move all the way. If we play this now, in fact, let's lose the first cutoff. I don't, I don't need that anymore. That was just sort of for the why it might not line up idea. So now let's say here, okay, we've got this idea, but I don't want the width to be moving so aggressively. Well, what I could do here is I could say, hey, on the width, if you have it selected and then go to the wrench icon, it will give you these various controls. Namely, we're interested in the input mapping. So if I recall, yeah, there's a bunch of presets in here already. 
Uh, but what I want to do is I just want to scale the the input. So instead of it turning all the way on and off, I want it to go only a fourth of of the input. So when this is at max, this will actually only go up to one fourth. And if we click enter, you'll actually see this is what it looks like. And we'll hit accept. And you don't want if we click on here, this remove conflicts, you don't want that on because that will remove the other things in this list. And we don't want that. See, that, what's great is you, you used to, you know, this list was here, but you couldn't see it. Now it's like, it's right there. You can see the list. So remove conflicts would remove stuff. You don't want that. So now it's only going up a fourth. And something we might want to do is add an offset to this. So let's go back to that and let's say, hey, I want the width to be higher. Whoops, let's select the width. Go back to this and let's do the input and we will add to it, um, let's say 50%, which I believe it works on a percentage mapping. Uh, it might work off the total value of the knob. I don't totally recall here. Let's just try 50 and see if, if that does. Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, I think I was right in the first place. Yeah, yeah, 0.5, so it's from zero to one. That's how it's gonna work. So now we have a more open filter. If you're not familiar with what width does, by the way, so there's the setting, there's the width. So it's kind of like, it's sort of like the slope of the filter, as you can think of it like that. So we're adjusting the slope while it's playing. It's kind of a, a strange setting to sort of have on while we're doing this. So let's add, let's add one more just for fun. Uh, we will add the resonance. And the resonance, we definitely want to adjust this to be like lower. So we'll do that, we'll do three for now. Hit okay. Kind of a silly thing to have on there, but why not? We'll go for a wide bump, maybe bring the width up a bunch. Oh, and I accidentally added it to my list because I never clicked the plus. So yeah, make sure you finish what you're doing there. Uh, but you know, that kind of worked out. So we're gonna go ahead, we'll keep that, why not? So once we're here, we say, okay, we've got this, this sick motion. We're automating all these parameters with this clip. Um, there's a couple behaviors you should consider. So the first one is, do you want the clips to be more like an articulation? So these are kind of like shaping the sound. So it kind of makes sense that I keep them separate so that when I drag, all of them are affected, each copy. I don't have to go through and change every single one, which is very, very nice. So I could, I could do something like this. Also, you could just, you know, do it in here if you so desire. So this might be a very desirable behavior. Um, in another video I did, I actually did something sort of like this and set my starting point. And then what I did was I merged them. So you can hit control G to merge all the clips. And then you can vary up individuals. And this allows you to get that variation uh, and set it all up. Now the, the downside to doing it this way is if you do this, um, you can't really go in and do the macro behavior without re-automating and, and setting the whole chain up again. So this is, you know, kind of a move that once you take this step, there's you can't go back to the other way, which is why you might, instead of using, for this, this is why I would use this, is because you could merge it and then make them all unique and do stuff like this. Uh, another option would be to take an a envelope and automate the envelope. And this could produce similar results. I personally like this workflow, even though it does not really allow you to go backwards. So it kind of kind of pushes you to keep going as opposed to going back. I don't know. There's the pros and cons though. So now let's say, okay, I like this, but I want it to grow over time. You could have it, you know, make each one of these things smaller. Like come in here and make this one small and then this one slightly bigger, and this one even bigger. And I've done that before. Um, it, it could be okay, but it's really not a whole lot of fun. Uh, so what an alternative to this could be is you can automate the minimum and the max. So if you make, take the minimum and raise it up, it's like the filters being pushed up. All these low points will be brought higher. They don't visually show this, but that's what's happening. So if I have a minimum of 50%, that means this low value is halfway. And let's lose the um, the resonance amount because that is like, oh buddy, that's too much. 
So you want to remove, yes. And we'll get rid of this one too. And we'll just turn this off for now. You can see as we move this up, it's essentially like I'm moving the filter open. So it's a really cool way to bring in an automation. And now we can just automate this. So we're automating our automation clip. We can have this turned down and we get a sick transition. Of course, you could also do the same thing with the max. And um, actually, let me leave this here. We'll just leave this at zero for now, just to sort of simplify this. So we could also do this with the max. We could automate the max and have the max start off. So this is now going to affect these high points. So this is saying these high points will be the high points and we're gonna lower them. And so this is essentially going to start turning these down till we're at zero the whole way. It'll bring the cutoff completely down. It's like we're moving the filter down. In fact, let me uh, show you here with this. So we'll see these will start out, they'll peak at max and they'll slowly start peaking lower and lower and lower till we're just sitting at the bottom. Now you might be wondering what happens if you automate both the min and the max. I highly recommend not doing this. It can get really confusing uh, if you have them as simultaneously being moved around. But what I believe happens, uh, you, you could run various experiments to see for yourself. But in this case, for example, I have the minimum as, the, as a high value. So the filter should be all the way open. And in this case, the maximum is a low value. So the minimum is above the maximum and the maximum is above the minimum. It's a very confusing setting. And I believe it just straight up ignores this because these are both you know, not possible. You can't have a min above the max and a max above the min. So we wind up just getting our filter move. Exactly kind of, you know, what you would think. Well, maybe not what you would think. It's confusing. Like I don't recommend doing this. Uh, if you have it grow over time. So for this time, there's a, a period where they match and then this grows. And for some reason, this setting will cause the filter to grow. as the minimum reaches the level. If we do it the other way and have the maximum grow, nothing, because the max can't be below the min. So in general, the, the minimum behavior is going to be the dominant behavior. But again, these are special cases that are kind of bizarre. You might accidentally do this if you, if you want certain fade moves like you want the mins to move or the maxes to move but in general whenever you're done i heavily recommend tidying up your min max by making sure your minimum level is at zero and your maximum level is at maximum this way things are defined in a way you expect them to be when you're later on in your track this is something that can very easily cause confusion you may have forgotten that you did something like that and you might be going, why is my automation being weird? A uh, very easy pitfall to fall into sound design wise. It can really cause a headache. So yeah, if you just remember to do this at the end, it is it is worth the extra like two seconds that it takes to write those last little automation points. But that is a bit on automation in the details. Uh, there is one more trick here that I haven't mentioned just because its use is so limited. Um, but what you can do is you can actually select the automation wire here, like select points. And if you change the bevel, it will change the bevel on the mall. So you see that I would love to be able to automate this. You can't automate this currently. Um, I, I really wish you could. I, now you might, this is useful for like quickly making shapes. But you can also have an Edison or, you know, whatever you like to use to record, uh, recording the output and you can move this with your mouse, essentially, you know, manual automation. But you can see it's not exactly the friendliest. It varies with parameter too. Some parameters will not find that too bad. Others will find it, you know, not good. So it's going to depend. Your, your results will vary. One day, I hope this is a possibility because man, that would be cool. 
or the ability to like have two clips of different shapes and then like morph between them that would also be pretty cool but anyways that is automation if you have any questions about this feel free to let me know subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day